Hi there, welcome to my channel. Before we start, kindly subscribe to the channel, like the videos and share it with your friends so even they can benefit. Let's start. In this lesson, we will continue to solve Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 2 Extended Variant 2 3, October November 2019, from question number 18 onwards. This is a set question. Part A m is equal to x, x is an integer and x is more than or equal to 2 and x is less than 6. Let's write the set m. So m is equal to 2, 3, 4 and 5. We took the element 2 because it's an equal sign here, less than or equal to. We did not write 6 because it is only less than 6. So we cannot take 6. A1 find nm. When it is written like that, it means we have to find the number of elements in m. We can see that there are four elements. So the answer is 4. A2 write down a set n where n is a subset and n is not equal to the empty set. So it, n cannot be an empty set. You can write any element from here. You can write 2, you can write 2, 3, you can write 2, 3, 4. It has to be a part of n. So n is equal to 2, 3. Part B. In each Venn diagram, shade the required region. A union B complement. I prefer to use the word A union B. Not. It is easier for students to understand. Everybody knows that this is the union, right? So A union B complement or A union B not is the outside part that we have to shade. Next, we have C intersection not D union E. C intersection D complement. Which is that part going to be? It's this part, which is only C and not a part of D. And this part joins with union E. So we, whatever is in E, we are going to join it with what we have shaded already. This whole thing is E. So this is our answer. Question number 19 is a speed time graph question. The diagram shows the speed time graph for 70 seconds of a car journey. Calculate the deceleration of the car during the first 20 seconds. So this is the speed and this is the time. To find acceleration or deceleration, we use a formula. Final velocity minus initial velocity over time taken. Velocity is speed. So what is our final speed? 16. So deceleration will equal to 16. And our initial velocity, we can see that it's at 10. And the time taken is 20. This will give you 0 0.3. So that is our deceleration, 0 0.3 meter per second square. Next, calculate the total distance traveled by the car during the 70 seconds. To find the distance, we have to find the area under the curve. You can break up this shape in any uh, form you find it easy. For now, I'm breaking this up into a rectangle and a triangle. So area 1 is the rectangle, area 2 is the triangle. The total area will give us the distance. So total area will find the first area is a triangle so half times base times height our base is 20 this is the corresponding value and the height is 16 minus 10 which is 6 that is 60 next it's a rectangle so length times width 70 times 10 which is 700. So the distance is going to be 700 
plus 60. 760 meters. Question number 20 is an inversely proportional question. T is inversely proportional to the square of x plus 1. So let's first write that. T is inversely proportional to the square of x plus 1. So we square the whole thing. And we have to find k. In questions like this, the first thing we have to do is find k. When x is 2, y is 5. So let's replace the values that we have. We'll get 5 is equal to k over 9. This is a divide. When we move to the other side, it will be multiplied. So 5 multiplied by 9 is 45 is k. Therefore, t is equal to, we replace the k with 45, x plus 1 square. When t is equal to 1.8, find the positive value of x. We know that t is equal to 45 over x plus 1 square. And now the value of t is given to us, so we replace it. And we have to find x. We will cross multiply here. And x plus 1 square is equal to 45 over 1.8. This will give us 25. If we have a square and we want to remove it, we are going to square root the other side. Normally, we will put a plus or a minus here. But because we want only the positive value, we will not put the negative sign here. So x plus 1 is equal to 5. And x is equal to 5 minus 1, which is 4. Question number 21 is a matrix question. It is no longer a part of your syllabus, so we don't need to solve it. Question number 22 is a very long question, but it's not a difficult question. A container is made from a cylinder and a cone, each of radius 5 cm. The height of the cylinder is 12 and the height of the cone is 4.8. The cylinder is completely filled with water and then the container is turned upside down as shown below. Calculate the depth of the water. When you turn the cylinder upside down, the water from the cylinder will flow to the cone. So you will have empty space on top. First, let's find the volume of the cylinder. To find the volume of the cylinder, we use the formula pi r square h. So pi into 5 square into height, which is 12, will give us 300 pi. Do not uh, write it as a decimal. Leave it as a pi. To find the volume of the cone, we use the formula that has been given to us, 1 third pi r square h. And the radius is 5 and the height is 4.8. This will give us 40 pi. Now to find the total volume, we will have to subtract 300 from 300 pi the 40 pi. That will give us 260 pi. That is the volume of the cylinder now because the extra water went down, correct? So this is the volume of the water remaining in the cylinder. To find the height, we will use again the same formula. Volume is equal to pi r square h. We have the volume 260 and the radius is 5 square. We need to find the height. Therefore, 260 pi divided by pi into 5 square will give us the height. This height it will give us, okay? That is height is equal to 10.4 centimeter. This is the height, 10.4 centimeter. We need to find 
the depth of the water. So we need this total height here. The height of the cylinder, uh, the cone is 4.8. Therefore, the depth of water is, add both the heights together, 10.4 plus 4.8, that will give you 15.2 centimeter. Question number 23 is a statistics question. Let's see what has been given to us. The time t it takes each of 50 students to travel to school is recorded. The table shows the results. We have been given the time and the frequency. Write down the modal class. Modal means the most repeated number. So it is 19 and the class is 10 to 15. Next, on the grid, complete the histogram to show the information in the table. We need to find the frequency density. To find the frequency density, we use the formula. Frequency density is equal to frequency divided by the class width. So the first bar has been drawn for us for the second bar. We need to find the frequency density. Frequency is 19 and the class width is 15 minus 10, which is 5. That will give us 3.8. So that's the second one. Let's first find the frequency density for each one and then we will plot it. For the second one, we have third one, we have 16 divided by the class width is 20 minus 15, which is 5. So 16 divided by 5 is 3.2. And then the last one. The frequency density is 8 divided by 40 minus 20 is 20. So 8 divided by 20, 0 0.4. We can see that 3.8 is here. So we'll make that bar 5678567 we'll draw the lines and then the third one is 3.2 3.2 is here and 0 0.4 is here now i'll just make the lines so the bars are drawn now we completed the histogram this brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope I've been able to help you. Kindly share this video with your friends, like the video, and if you want me to solve any particular exam paper or any topic-wise questions, do let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching.